Hey guys, this is a uh, uh, second video of the day. We're gonna do um, a video on where are the best places in the world to travel to where you can learn how to cook uh, with the local culture. And um, we're not gonna cover all the best places, we're just gonna cover a couple wonderful places. So I say we because I'm with a special VIP guest, Peggy Markell, who is a female entrepreneur, founder of Peggy Markell's Culinary Adventures, which is uh, renowned for actually get, touching in with uh, the culture and connecting um, with the locals and the local food and traditions. And she's beautiful and one of my best friends, and here she is. So, hi, yeah, so everyone, if you feel like it, say hi to Peggy. You can um, comment, say where you're from. Cool. Uh, yeah, we're doing a second bonus video because Peggy Markell just totally coincidentally uh, walked in. And she is kind of funny because I just did this whole video on cooking um, and recipes. And I felt a, I actually referenced our video. Someone actually brought it up. Oh, and, yeah. I, and I said, yeah, that was better than what I'm doing now because I had a genius cook and then me not really knowing what to do. And it's a good combination. And then you walked in. Um, to Elephant Headquarters in Boulder, Colorado. So yeah, if you um, can leave a comment, say where you're from, and if you have any questions about cool places to go travel to and to learn how to cook. So you, Peggy, lead Culinary Adventures. Yes. And what is that? Well, let me just tell you the most exciting thing. Mm -hmm. uh, next year is my 25th year of doing this. That means wow. I've been connecting culture and cuisine for 25 years. I can hardly believe that myself. So it's yeah. kind of exciting. So yeah, I'm, 25, I'm celebrating that's that a big right one. It is big. Elephant's 14 and I feel like we've been doing it forever. Right? So I can only imagine what 25 feels yeah, like. 25 feels really big. So, you know, um, 25 years ago, there weren't that many people doing this sort of thing. So I was, uh, you know, it was kind of novel, if you can believe that, you know, to go into a culture and say, hey, this is really far out, this is so cool. You know, we need to reconnect to these cultures that um, have always sort of had a close connection between their culture and cuisine. Mm -hmm. You know, their farm to table, their food uh, culture is very much a part of the identity of who they are. And uh, mm -hmm. so, like, I was totally into that, and certainly Italy being the first one, and Tuscany being the first one. So I was one of the first Tuscan programs out there, even though it's super sort of, you know, um, popular thing to do. And it's still going. We have two beautiful wood-fired ovens. Uh, we have great people in the kitchen. We have, you know, we explore the vineyards and uh, food artisans around, you know, and these are really knowledgeable people, knowledgeable people that I've been working with for a long time. So it's like... So you work friends. with local chefs and cooks and yeah. all that? Yes. And we, cook, and we cook in a beautiful kitchen with, you know, uh, wood-fired ovens. And then whoever's going on the journey, the culinary adventure with you, learns how to cook a little bit? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Learns you, how come to back, eat. you come back with a, a wonderful array of... Uh, very sort of easy recipes from a plethora, you know, of ingredients that maybe you just didn't know how to put together. But the coolest thing is that it's very intuitive. You know, once you have time, this is not your, you know, jacket, tote kind of cooking class. This is put on an apron, let's get in the kitchen. You know, we've, we've been through the markets, we know what's going on. Okay, what are we doing here? And we try to use, the, you know, work with the regional uh, dishes just because it's so fun because that's what people know that's what's growing there and so you you know we don't go by recipes we have recipes but we we go by showing you what's there getting your own hands in it and feeling it and it's fun it's so fun yeah it's really I've fun. never gone on one of her adventures not yet but uh well, I, that's just Tuscany. I've helped prep cook yeah. for many dinners and it's always really fun it is really fun and um, I would love to do it so Tuscany Tuscany, um, well, I have three programs in Italy proper. Uh, one would be Sicily. Sicily is amazing if you haven't been to Sicily. Uh, you know, as far as what's going on there, what's going on there with wine is, has always been, you know, kind of amazing. But these days, you know, we're exploring Manetna and the wines that are growing on Manetna. Is that an island? No, or it's, an area? It's, the, it's a volcano. Oh. You've heard of Mount Etna? Oh yeah, yeah. Mount Etna. Mount Etna is cool. the largest volcano. 
And, uh, if and you have then, questions anyway. for Peggy or places to go, leave them and say where you're from. Yeah. So uh, that's really great. And we also work with Fabrizia Lanza and her beautiful farm, her organic farm. And she's doing a program there now called Cook the Farm, which is really awesome. It's like In a Sicily. Three -month program. But ours are a week to 10 days. And so Sicily, then the other trip I have, which of course you're going to come on one of these days, is the sailing trip. Yeah. You know, that's, that's what we, I want to do. We go from, uh, from this little island of Procida and we go all along uh, the archipelago of, uh, that's off the coast of Napoli and also the Amalfi Coast. So we swim and dip and sip wines and cook and, and eat, you know, and gather and, you know, mm. we have a wonderful time. So maybe Yoli uh, is our sweet editor who's on duty from California. If you can le search Peggy Markell, mm -hmm. Sicily, Peggy Markell, Tuscany, and leave, she's written articles about all of these, and leave them in the comments, that would be great. Yeah, that would be wonderful. And then, so, outside of Italy, um, we do a program in southern Spain, in Sevilla, mm -hmm. and that's all about sherry, the jamón with the black mm -hmm. pigs, which I know you don't like to eat, yeah. but really, really fabulous, and just extremely beautiful culture, and old, you know, mm -hmm. classic uh, culture that, uh, Spanish and Moorish culture that's infused together, so that's really bad. Well, in our prior video, I, I discussed how I'm vegan, but the whole world isn't vegan, and I realized that, and I think the one thing, hopefully all elephant readers can, whether you eat meat or, and fish, or you're vegan, we can all agree that factory farming is not good, and it's not even fun to eat cheap, No, this gross is not food. about that kind of... But you can eat affordably, you yes. can eat simply, and you can eat relatively mindfully, depending on what your Absolutely. view is, but all of us can agree factory farming is not no, cool. No, no, we visit an organic farm, you know, a family of pig farmers, and they grow their very own pigs, they have 100 pigs, that's what I'm talking about. And do I eat uh, jamón iberico outside of there? Not usually, you know, just what because... What is that? It's the iberico means the, the, um, uh, the, the ham from uh. Iberia, which is Spain. You know, Iberico. Cool. Jamon is what you call ham in Spain. Spanish. So let's get back to sailing around Amalfi. Okay, what do you want to know? Do, do you just stand around on a sailboat and swim and eat good food in the ports you, or something? You sail, you can, you can do whatever you want. I mean, you know, we have a, we have a 54 foot sailboat boat, and then we also have a, a, a large catamaran, which is yeah. also easier to kind of move around on. Yeah. But we swim, we sail, we cook, we eat, we move, we explore the little islands around there as well. And uh, we read. We talk, we discuss life, uh, mm. you know, we get to know the Neapolitan culture, which is really fun. Because I have a wonderful captain who's like, dear. Yeah. Yeah. So all that the, one is all like, the ladies are very, love, love with yes. Them, right? yeah. uh, it's a very spacious trip, you know, you're with the elements. Mm. So sun, sea, sky, uh, all the good food, you know, that's also terrific. Get a little closer to you. Oh. <laughs> More or less me. Um, so, yeah, I love that. But you know, as far as culture goes, then we head down to Morocco. Mm. And so we're we're moving around almost like a you know caravan which I adore you know from Marrakesh then uh, up into the Atlas Mountains and we spend time with the Berbers and you know we learn all about the different tagines from everywhere and then down at the sea we ride camels on the and sea. The tagine is the triangular. Oh, the tagine is the conical shaped right. terracotta uh, cooking vessel that has a terracotta bottom and a conical shaped lid and you know it's slow cooking. This is slow food, slow travel, you know, getting into the land, talking to the people, getting to know them, dancing with them, listening to their music, you know, it's really awesome. And if you don't go to these places, you don't know what they're like. You know, mm -hmm. that's the really, obviously, right. huge benefit is that you could read about certain cultures or certain people and you go there and you find you've never had better hospitality in your life mm -hmm. or been better taken care of or kinder to, you know? So that's another thing that I love. To, for me, the experiences aren't only about the food. Right. That's a fundamental part of what you do, which I respect and why I want to go is it's not just tourism. No. Like what's different than what you're doing from tourism? Well, my programs are not commercial in the sense that they're not to, for mass tourism, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm a very handheld, 
artisan company, and I've been doing this, as I said, for 25 years, and, and I go on my programs, and I, yeah. I introduce you to my friends, and, yeah. you know, I've known them for a long time, and so it really is this sort of, like, if you were coming to visit me in Italy, and I take you around to do all the things I love to do, and show you my friends, and take you to eat here and there, and say, hey, we have these, let's work with Piero, because here's our, you know, our wood-fired ovens, this would be so great, let's make a vegan pizza. You know, let's do this. So it's handheld, it's artisan, it's, you know, close to the bone. You're actually it's going... It's transformative. But you're actually going and connecting with the culture and with the people and, and helping maintain these wonderful traditions. You're yes. not just going and kind of buying tchotchkes and no, souvenirs. No, it's not this huge thing where you're being run around, you know, for days and days, you know, in a bus. Yeah. I mean, I like to stay regionally mm -hmm. and do what we can within a two to three hour, you know, uh, radius. I think that's the best thing. All right. So in let's... India, let's don't forget. Oh, so let's talk about India in one second, and then I'm going to see Olympia, Washington, uh, Lori, uh, Rhiannon in Texas. I'm going to just see if there's any comments or questions for Peggy, folks. So if you have any comments or questions for a wonderful, wonderful chef here, um, Peggy seems nice. Holly, good evening to you. Uh... My my talks are always eye opening and refreshing, mostly because I have cool guests sometimes. Uh -huh. uh, Lindsay is on. Hi, Lindsay. Uh, Holly, I want to spend some time in Redding, California, by Mount Shasta. I've only spent a little time there in the past. I hear that people can spiritually connect a lot better by Mount Shasta. Does anyone know why? I mean, that's a good general question. Does anyone know why it's so spiritually connected to us all? Like, where are places you go and you just feel like connected in your heart and, and kind of, you know, wakeful and like you're um, enlivened by those places. Where, where are your favorite places? Uh, well, you know, the ones for me are actually certainly Florence. I mean, I spend a lot of time in Florence in the Tuscan countryside and that may seem rather she-she, like, well, what do you mean? That's not like Stonehenge or something, but uh, I think the Renaissance connecting with the, the muse of mm -hmm. the Renaissance is something that's um, you don't want to miss if you've never done it, if you have an interest in, in the high thought or how a human being can be. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we take Buddhism and, you know, we talk about Luntan being uplifted. Well, the Renaissance was something incredible that came out of the Dark Ages, you know, mm -hmm. and in a real artistic way. A real so, awakening from real one awakening. of the darkest periods of human that's history. Right. And I do feel that also. I mean, I do pinpoint in each of my programs the places where I feel the most energy. So it, it's definitely Mount Shasta has a ton of energy. I'm, I'm about to do a wilderness trip in Canyon de Chez. And that's also like one of those places that's supposed to be incredibly mm. untouched or full of spirit and still connected to the Navajos. Mm. So um, it is about the energy of a place. And mm. I usually go where I feel the energy of a place, for sure. And the trips are transformative, they are. So it's um, being able to spend time in those places and be with the people who come from there. They have different light in their eyes, you know? Mm. So it becomes this very inspiring thing. And you, you drop out of what feels like we're so bombarded, you know, with uh, a different kind of uh, uh, meat culture or, you know, I don't know, commercialism, it sounds pretty neat to think Just about it's moving around, but it's connected, it's more yeah. grounded, it's slower. It's yeah. That's really awesome. beautiful. That's how I feel just going and having dinner with you and your dinner parties. Um, uh, weathering, that's okay. I'm not good at this kind of food stuff either, but that's kind of why, so this talk is for us too. Jill, I studied at Apicius in Florence, Apicius. It's a uh -huh. great school with individual classes for tourists as well Terrific. as a regular school. Uh, Peggy is the right idea. Love that, Jill. That sounds fun. Um, yeah, if you have any more comments about your time in Florence. Um, I got to go to the Ecole, the leather school, oh, yeah. which even though I'm vegan, totally blew my mind. It was yeah. probably the most inspiring in place. Santa Croce. It really yeah. was inspiring. Did you go to Chibreo? Um, is one of my favorite cafes. What is highest in nutrients is from Lee, Leah. Uh, what is highest in nutrients and flavor that can be foraged? Do you ever do that? Seaweeds. Seaweeds. Yeah, seaweeds for sure. Uh, for instance, you know, there's even the purslane that grows in your garden. 
if uh, it's always that weed, you know, that little succulent looking weed that you're ready to tear out, you know, like if we've torn it out forever. It's amazing how long, say, the Moroccans have been eating purslane. Mm. And now it's a big thing. You'll see it on uh, uh, the menus of mm. uh, pretty fancy restaurants because it's super high, I think, in vitamin C, uh, vitamins. And so if you haven't checked out purslane yet, do. And you can eat it raw, so just make sure it's not sprayed. That's very important. Yeah. Yeah, so Yoli, maybe you could leave the, um, the weeding uh, video. I've done two with Brigitte Mars. Okay. Um, you see, we run around Boulder and we pick weeds and then make a meal out of it. It's pretty cool because, like, one of our favorite farms, uh, Cure Farm in Boulder, um, with Paul and Anne, um, they're selling dandelion greens now, yes. and it cracks me up because we spend all our time poisoning them and That's weeding right. them and trashing them. Yeah. But you can actually buy them now. Yeah. People are getting dandelion it. Dandelion greens, chicory, those are easy things to find. And they're healthy and they're delicious. Really healthy and delicious. And say, for instance, the Italians have been using that sort of thing all the time. I mean, wild asparagus, chicory, you know, you find them out in the, uh, on the roadsides all the time just looking for wild greens. Hmm. Uh, Obviously porcini. mushrooms, people yeah. love that. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, India. Yeah, India. Also, this is Rajasthan. So, I have to say that it looks like it's really, you know, grand and royal and, and palaces, which it is, but they're villages and the village life there and what they're doing is also really quite incredible. And, you know, going into the villages and seeing how they live and, you know, witnessing the village potter make his pots and wow. his wife painting them with a little donkey brush and wow. um, seeing how that life sort of still exists. Uh, but you don't know for how long. That's another thing why I'm, you know, so hot about what, uh, mm. about being able to go out and study food traditions, culture, because things are changing. Mm. They're changing fast, rapidly. You know, certain markets are disappearing, village life. Like, for instance, um, the sons of the pot, sons of the potter don't want to be potters. And they mm. want to do something else, of course, you know. Mm. So what happens to the potter's you, you know, uh, status in the village, who's going to make the pots? Pots are used to barter for other things, mm. you know. And so how can they do without their traditional water jugs? Mm. What will they do? So we don't know the answers to these questions. We don't know what's going to happen here. It's funny, and hopefully the, those of us who visit these um, places can help remind those cultures that of the value and the magic that they have, that maybe they take for granted. They look at <coughs> our flat screen TVs and yeah. our iPhones and they think, oh, that's cool. But actually, from our point of view, we're going there and saying, wow, this is magical. This is, this is cool. Yeah. No, it for the totally, new generation. it's totally cool. And um, we're watching, you know, how the ancient world is becoming more modern. And in some ways, that's also really exciting, you know, uh, with what young people are interested in. Mm. And there's a lot of fusion going on, you know, and there's mm. Wi-Fi everywhere now. So, uh -huh. you know, it's not just backward or, right you know and it's not all about poverty i mean poverty still exists you know but um yeah. but it's like there's a it's becoming more middle class uh, almost everywhere in, in hmm. a sense you know hmm. but so getting back to the villages and uh say up in the mountains of the berbers or in these places is really wonderful because you see these people that have beautiful teeth for instance you'll appreciate hmm. this because they've always eaten w what grows around them hmm. and so uh, they they have a stronger constitution, and so they didn't blow themselves out. So their their teeth is beautiful, their skin is beautiful. Wow. You know, they're very healthy. They can run up and down mountains. It's beautiful to wow. see that they're not living a, you know, commercialized crazy life like we are. So what's one maybe takeaway for all of us, like for the next meal we make at home, or we get all the ingredients at a grocery or a farmers market or wherever? What's one? sort of mindful thing, you, you know, you think all of us could do that would be fun, that would benefit our lives. You mean by going to the, well, you mean going to the farmers? Just in our lives right now, what could, what's something that Peggy Markell would love to see all of us be doing? You know, I would say just trusting ourselves more about, you know, food and cooking and get yourself to an organic market or a farmer's market or where they have good food and go with what you feel drawn to, you know, be drawn, if you're drawn to red peppers get red peppers you know i mean get food that makes sense and that you know that um you can make a balanced meal out of and that you can prepare simply and i would say the two most important ingredients are good salt and a good olive oil
Hmm. Yeah. So then you can put a very simple meal together um, with hardly anything. Hmm. You know, and you make it beautiful, and it's usually tasty. And I mean, if you if you get good grown uh, food. You know, not only is it tastier, but it's healthier for you. I will put in a plug for The Third Plate, if you haven't read Dan Barber's book, The Third Plate. Um, it's really incredible. It gives you a whole uh, education about soil mm -hmm. and how important soil is. You know, because mm -hmm. he's also a chef. So not only from uh, the point of view of uh, uh, that we need to be healthy and no pesticides, but it really makes a difference in the entire ecosystem and not to mention flavor. Mm -hmm. So I think that's super important. So those are just some very simple that's things great. I would tell you. That's kind of what we talked about in our last video. So I love that you connect with that, which is the hidden ingredient in any great recipe is where it comes from, the source, and that includes any of the packaging or hopefully as little packaging as possible. You know, responsibility for it being humane and hopefully organic, good soil, good farmers, um, and then where it goes at the end. So it's not just when it makes an appearance right in front of our face. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, I think we can take more personal responsibility, which we have to, you know. Yeah. And I think it's a very important thing, you know, to consider, you know, the, the connection between your mind, your body, your soul, mm -hmm. uh, and your own, you know, turning your own earth inside. I mean, you know, we get really philosophical about that, you mm -hmm. know, like the idea that the that the, the soil is so important and the ecosystem of the soil and what lives in there and what has space to breathe and, and how that is actually a healthy thing that will grow a healthy plant and doesn't actually set up uh, an environment for weeds, you know? Weeds grow where the soil is poor, you mm -hmm. know? And so um, it's like our bloodstream. We need to keep our bloodstream right. strong. And the way you do that is with uh, eating good food from good soil. Yeah. Yeah, and, and also obviously knowing, as we mentioned, uh, like with Brigitte Mars, that some of the weeds are, you can eat them and they're great, like yeah. dandelion greens. Yeah, or the, you know, the purslane, for instance, in good right. soil is even better purslane. Uh -huh. So it doesn't disappear, you know, like some mm. weeds can't grow, mm. you know, in a good soil. But for instance, purslane can. Well, purslane, I, I gotta check it out. Well, I have to show you because I was just in Oregon, <laughs> in uh, Graham's and Chinese Garden, and you know, uh, we ate a lot of it just because it was so it was big. It was like giant huh. purslane because huh. their soil was so nice. I don't even know what it looks like. I'll show you. You cool. go. Oh my God! I can't believe it's that. Well, so Peggy and I are thinking about doing an elephant trip with Peggy. Yeah. Um, so if any of you are interested in that, um, you can. I don't know. You, you can. Should let it, let us know. Which yeah, let Peggy you know. Go. Uh, which um, one do you feel most attracted to? And your website is PeggyMarkell.com. Yes. M-A-R-K-E-L.com. That's right. Uh, Peggy Markell, thank you so Yay. much for being on thank the show. You. Good to see you spontaneously. Yeah. And, uh, that was great. Yeah. You saved fun. me. That was great. All right. Say bye to this bye. beautiful woman. Ciao, ciao. Finish. <laughs> see y'all. Thank you so much.